Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. My name is Prashant Kumar, I am TA for this course. Till now in this course you have learned about fugoid mode, longitudinal dynamics, lateral dynamics, uh, short period mode, spiral, Dutch roll and roll modes. Today I will be emphasizing more on the numerical part of that. So before continuing on to numerical, let us see what were the dynamics equations which we derived for longitudinal as well as for lateral mode. In previous lecture you might have seen the longitudinal a matrix was given by CU. This is a matrix of full, uh, longitudinal dynamics mode. Now, in longitudinal mode, there are two modes short period mode and a fugoid mode, and the approximation matrix for those are for fugoid mode. the matrix will be given by xu minus g minus zu upon u naught 0. So, this is a matrix for fugoid mode. So, characteristic equation for this fugoid mode will be psi minus a equals to 0. Now, equating this matrix, we will get S minus x u by g z u upon u naught S equal to 0. So, the characteristic equation will be S square minus x u of s minus z u g upon u naught equals 0. From this characteristic equation, we can see that the natural frequency for fugoid mode will be under root of minus z u g upon u naught. Similarly, we can derive the value of zeta from this equation that is zeta will be minus x u divided by 2 of omega n p. Now, this was the uh, natural frequency given for fugoid mode. If we neglect the compressibility effect in fugoid mode, the natural frequency formula reduces to neglecting compressibility effect omega n for fugoid can be written as root 2 g upon g naught and the value of zeta will become 1 by root 2 1 upon l upon d. These all calculations you have seen in your previous lectures. I am just repeating what were taught in this previous lecture. So, this is for fugoid mode. Now, we will be seeing for short period mode. For short period mode, the matrix was given by Similarly, the characteristic equation for this short period mode will be S square minus m q plus alpha dot 
plus z alpha upon u naught s plus m q z alpha upon u naught minus of m alpha now you might have noticed i have written m alpha dot and m alpha instead of m w that you can easily derive since you know that alpha is given by w upon u so that's why you can replace w by alpha into u so when substituting when making this substitution in our equation you will uh, come to this characteristic equation so from this characteristic equation we can see the natural frequency for short period mode will be under root of m q z alpha upon u naught minus of m alpha and zeta will be m q minus of m q plus m alpha dot plus z alpha on u naught divided by 2 omega n of short period mode. So, up to here, this all were taught in the class. So, this will be the formulas we will be using in numerical, which I am going to write out now. So, let us take a numerical on a longitudinal mode. Using this longitudinal derivatives, you can directly substitute these variables in this equation and you will reach this longitudinal matrix. Characteristic equation of this uh, longitudinal matrix will be derived from the same formula as we did for short period and fugoid mode that is S i minus a equals to 0, where a is the longitudinal matrix. Now, since you know this is a 4 cross 4 matrix, so the, uh, uh, the order of the characteristic equation will be of the fourth order. So, let us derive the characteristic equation using this formula. The longitudinal mode characteristic equation will be determinant of s plus 0 0.045 minus 0 0.036 0 0.3212 0 0.369 s plus 2 0 to 0 point zero three nine six minus one seventy six s plus two point nine four eight zero zero this will be minus zero point zero zero one nine 0, 0, minus 1, s. So, determinant equating this determinant to 0 will get characteristic equation. So, it will be pretty long calculation. You have to bear with me. Since you know this is a 4 cross 4 matrix, so what will be my best strategy is to go for minimum calculation. So, I will be choosing this element and this element because like that I have to only calculate the determinant of two sub matrices. So, I will be taking this and the general formula for calculating uh, de determinant of any matrix will be that element minus 1 to the power of what is the location of that matrix that row and column sum of that since this is a 4 cross 4 matrix this is 4 4 cross 3 and this is 4 cross 4. So, sum of the position of rows and column that is 4 plus 3, then determinant of the rem matrix remaining by limiting the rows in which that element is there and column in which element is there that is determinant of this matrix I have to calculate that is S plus 0 0.045. Minus zero point zero three six thirty two point two 
zero point six nine S plus two point zero two then zero then minus zero point zero zero one nine zero point zero three nine six and zero this then plus s and same using that formula minus one four plus four and determinant of the matrix by eliminating sub matrix eliminating the row and column which the element lies that will be this whole matrix s plus 0 0.045 0 0.3962 okay minus 0 0.0019 minus 0 0.036 s plus 2.02 0 0.0396 0 minus 176 and s plus 2.948 now for solving this equation we will get this will be minus 1 minus 1 so it will be 1 and determinant of this sub matrix will be s plus 0 0.045 into this eliminating 0 into 0, 0 minus 0, minus of minus that will be plus 0 0.036 and in attend is 0 minus 0. So, we will be left with only 32.2 and 0 0.369 into 0 0.0396 minus of minus and minus will be plus. 0 0.0019 into s plus 2.02 okay plus s and this will be the determinant of sub matrix which will be s plus 0 0.045 into s plus 2.02 into s plus 2.948 minus 0 0.0396 minus and minus will be plus into 176 minus minus plus 0 0.036 into 0 0.369 into s plus 2.948 minus of only 176 into 0 0.0019. So, this will reduce to 0 0.061 s plus 0 0.593 plus equating this part we will get s into s cube plus 4.968 s square plus 12.92 s plus 0 0.045 s square plus 0 0.223 s plus 0. 587 plus 0 0.013 s plus 0 
which will be further reduced to s power 4 plus 5.05 s cube plus 13.2 square plus 0 0.67 s plus 0 0.59 equals to 0. So, this is your characteristic equation for that ma longitudinal matrix. So, I will be showing you how to calculate the roots of this characteristic equation or higher degree polynomial, but before that we already derived the formula for short period mode and long period mode. Let us see what are the roots for the short period and long period mode or figured mode. We already wrote that omega and figured will be root over minus z u g upon u naught. Okay, I did not mention u naught is 176 feet per second. Okay u naught. So, it will come around 0 0.26 radian per second. Similarly, value of zeta will be minus x u upon 2 omega and figoid which will be 0 0.087. Similarly, for short period omega n short period will be root over z alpha n q u naught m alpha which will give 3.6 radian per second and similarly zeta for short period mode will be 0 0.69. I am not doing the calculation, just you have to substitute this value in the formula and you will get that value. Okay. And the characteristic root for this equation will be, I will show how to derive this afterwards, the characteristic root will be equals to, since this is a fourth order equation, so we will get four roots that two uh, complex conjugate poles s 1 2 equals to minus 0 0.0171 plus minus 0 0.213 i and s 3 4 will be minus 2.5 plus minus 2.5 9 i. Okay. So, this was the roots derived for characteristic equation of fourth order from approximation. Roots will be given by minus zeta fugoid omega fugoid plus minus omega n root over 1 minus zeta fugoid square. Similarly, for short period approximation the roots will be given by minus zeta short period omega n short period plus minus omega n short period root over 1 minus zeta short period whole square. Now, for fugoid mode if you calculate the value of t half which is given by 0 0.69 by eta, okay, where eta is the real part of that root, we will we'll calculate to 6.09 divided by 0 0.0171. This is for the characteristic equation, the roots which got for characteristic equation. What will be the value of T half? It will be, this is mod, so this will be equal to 4 point three seconds. 
similarly t half for short period mode will be divided by 2.5 which will give me 0 0.28 second. This was the t half we got for uh, characteristic roots we got for characteristic equation. Now, for the roots which you got while approximating fugoid and short period mode, from that t half will be t half fugoid mode equals to 0 0.69 divided by 0 0.023 equals to 30 second. Similarly, for t half for short period will be 0 0.69 divided by 2.48 equals to 0 0.278. You can check that by calculating the value of uh, short period and fugoid mode approximation. Just substituting the value of zeta and omega n, you will get the value of uh, roots what will be for fugoid and short period mode. Now, as you can see, the exact root gave me a t half of 40.3 seconds, while during approximation for fugoid mode, I got t half as 30 seconds. As you can see, the t half which I got from exact root analysis was 40.3 seconds, and the t half which I got for fugoid mode during approximation is 30 seconds. This give me, give, gives an error of about 25 percent. While for short period mode, the error is very minimal or you can say the approximation was very accurate. So now coming back to how to derive the exact root of this fourth order polynomial or higher order polynomials. For that we will be using a numerical method known as newton raphson for calculating roots of higher order equations. newton raphson methods numerical calculation works on the formula given by x n plus 1 equals to x n minus f of x divided by f dash x, where f x is your polynomial for which we have to derive characteristic roots or we have to derive roots f dash as the word is clear this will be a derivative of this polynomial. Now, this n is your previous value and what will be the value you get from substituting this value in the function, you will get next value and you substitute till you reach uh, you, the, your solution converges or you, you reach a tolerance value. For instance, I have given my tolerance value as 0 0.001. So, when this tolerance value is reached, my difference between the previous value and the next value is within the limit of 0 001, my solution will converge there. So, I will show you how to find roots of the characteristic equation that is fourth order longitudinal matrix. So, my function f x will be given by S4 plus 5.05 S cube plus 13.2 S square plus 0. 67s plus 0 0.59. Now, differentiation of this f dash x will be 4s cube plus 15.15s square plus 26.4s plus 0. 0.5. Now, using Newton Raphson method, that is 
x n plus 1 equals to x n minus f of x dash x. Now, there is one limitation to Newton Raphson rule. If you know the roots are in complex plane, you have to give initial value as a complex number. Otherwise, if you give it a real number, the solution would converge if the if your characteristic equation contains only uh, complex roots. So, solution will not converge and it will continue to run for an infinite loop. So, that is why if you, you know that your solution contains a complex root, so better give the value of x n as a complex number. Since we know this is a fourth order polynomial which consists of two roots both complex and conjugate. So, suppose this initial value of n I will give x naught equals to i. Let us see what will be the value of this uh, Newton Raphson where it converges for the value of x naught equals to i. So, for x naught equals to i, I substitute this value of i in my equation f x and f dash x to get the value of this numerator and denominator which will be subtracted from x equals to i. This gives me for first iteration x dash will be equal to minus 0 0.1056 plus 0 0.5528 i. Now, substitute this value the new value of x in the uh, previous equa in the equation of Newton Raphson. So, now x n will become the value which obtained after iteration 1 and the new value of x n plus 1 will be after second iteration it will be again repeating the same process this will be Zero point zero one six six plus zero point two one two one I sixth iteration give me minus zero point zero one seven zero plus two one two five I seventh minus zero point zero one seven 0 plus 0 0.2125i. Now, as you can see, after 6 iteration, solution of this equation will have the same value, this value will be repeated. So, we can say the root of this characteristic equation or we can say one root of this characteristic equation will be 0 0.0170 plus 0.2125i. Now, since we know these are fourth order equation, it will have four roots and all the roots will be conjugate of each other. So, there will be a same, ima uh, same root will a mirror image of this root that will be minus 0 0.0170 minus of 0 0.2125i. You can verify this by putting the initial value of x naught as minus i, the root will converge at that particular point. Now, this was for the first uh, first root means or you can have a pair of root. Now, if you want to derive the second root or the second conjugate root, you have to change the initial value of x naught to some higher value because the Newton Raphson rules will converge to the nearest converging uh, nearest root. So, if I give minus i or minus 2 i, it will continue to converge to do that particular point. So, you would not be able to get second root. To get my second root, 
let us take the value of x naught as minus 3 plus 3 i. Now, for if you give initial value as 3 minus 3 plus 3 i, your Newton Raphson will give solution as x dash for first iteration will be minus 2.6683 plus 2.674 i. This is first, second iteration will give minus 2.5274. Plus two point five eight seven nine i. Third iteration will give x dash equals to minus two point five zero eight zero plus two point five eight seven zero. Fourth will give x dash equals to minus two point five. 0, 0, 0, plus 2.5972 i. So, you can see as the roots are re uh, repeating. So, we can say this is another root of the equation. So, this is one root then we have a mirror image of this. So, another root will be same with the minus sign. So, we can say these are the roots or, or you can say these are the exact root of the characteristic equation given by this polynomial. Previously, you saw the uh, statistic equation of longitudinal mode. So, now we are doing a problem on lateral mode and here also you know the lateral matrix is given by uh, this uh, derivative formula or uh, this, uh, this formula matrix and the roots of lateral direction characteristic equations are spiral roll and dash roll. The roots for different modes are for spiral mode. is given by L beta N R minus N R N beta divided by L beta. Similarly, for roll it is L p. For Dutch roll you can get the roots by solving the characteristic equation minus Y of beta plus u naught n of r by u naught plus y by beta n r minus n beta y r plus u naught n beta whole by u naught. This is for Dutch T C H. These are the roots for various modes approximation. This will be the roots given for spiral roll and Dutch roll modes. So, based on this, let us see a numerical. The matrix for lateral dynamics is given by this equation, and various lateral direction derivatives are mentioned here. So, first of all, what you will be doing will be finding the characteristic equation for this matrix, and as we know, the characteristic equation for any matrix is given by Si minus C determinant of this equals to 0. Characteristic equation we will get S plus 0 0.254 0 1 minus 0 0.182, 16 0.02, s plus 8.40, minus 2.190, 4 0 0.3 5 0 s plus 0 0.760 0 0 minus 1 
0 s determinant of this equating to 0. So, for my convenience or you can see the calculation will be easy if I choose this element and this element because I have to deal with only two sub matrices. So, so we will get the aesthetic equation as minus 0 0.1 minus 4.488 s plus 0 0.76 0 plus s minus 1 to the power of 4 plus 4 and determinant s plus 0 0.5 4 this is 2 0 1 16.02 s plus 8.40 minus 2.19 minus 4.488 0 0.76 and s plus 0 0.76. Now, I would not be doing the full calculation, just do the calculation and the final matrix which you will get for this LA, uh, known as the characteristic equation for lateral directional matrix is S4 plus 9 0.5 one seven s cube plus thirteen point nine eight two s square plus forty eight point one zero two s plus zero point four two zero five. So, this is a final characteristic equation for the mat given matrix and now if you want to calculate the roots of this characteristic equation or the exact roots, we will be using the Newton Raphson method which you have already seen. Now, the approximate solution or approximate root for this matrix will be given by these approximate roots for different modes. So, equating this using the uh, derivatives given for this questions the root for spiral mode will be minus 16.02 into minus 0 0.76 minus 2.19 into 4.49 divided by minus 16.02 which will be equal to your minus 0 0.144. Similarly, for roll mode, it will be simply LP and LP is given as minus 8.4. Similarly, for Dutch mode, you can substitute the value of Y beta and every derivative from the equation and the roots for this equation will be lambda 1 2 equals to minus 0 0.51 plus minus 2.109i. Now, using this equation, you can cal calculate the natural frequency and the value of zeta. Now, what I will, I am interested in, what will be the values I will use so that this series converts very quickly. So, the trick for that part is, since you approximation of these modes are very easy. So, keep the value of the initial, keep the initial values in the Newton Raphson formula which we already mentioned was a n plus 1 equals to x n minus f of x by f dash of x 
where f x is our characteristic polynomial for which we have to determine the roots and f dash will be simply derivative of that. Let me write the f dash value of this also f dash this will be f of x f dash x will be given as 4 s q plus 28.25 s square plus 27.96 s plus 48.102 so this is fx this is f dash x so i was telling you the trick part or you can say what should be the value of this x n so that my series converges very easily so for that as you know you can approximate the approximation for modes are very simple so just use these values as a, as an initial value so your series will converge with minimum number of iterations so let me show what will be the value for different uh, if we substitute these values in the initial value of this newton raphson formula how many how many iterations it will require to reach a convergence so for instance since there are three roots and as you know that for a single root just change the sign of this in the initial value you will get both the root let me show you how many minimum iterations are required for a series to get converged so let me put x equals to 0 x not equals to 0 see since my first root is very close to 0 so substituting this value in this function or you can say fx and f dash x my value of x dash will be minus 0 0.0087 this is first iteration after second iteration now substitute this value in place of xn and you will get x dash is equal to minus 0 0.0088 third iteration minus 0 0.0088 so you can see just by putting the value of 0 my iteration has reduced just after two iteration i get a root of the equation so this will be the root exact root for your spiral mode as you can see the difference between calculated by using approximate formula and the exact root which you got from the newton raphson method that's why we uh, the approximation for spiral mode is not very accurate so as you can see by putting the value of x naught my series uh, converged in two iterations itself for second root now let me put x naught equals to minus 10 you can put uh, simply you can put uh, minus 9 or minus 8 it will converge even converge very fast but let me put minus 10 my first value first iteration will give me minus 8.933 second iteration will give minus 8.505 third iteration will give minus 8.436 fourth iteration will give minus 8.434 fifth iteration minus 8.434 so you can see after three fourth iteration i got the value of uh, i got the value of uh, root what will be the exact root of the characteristic equation so the more closer you put initial value to your approximate root the minimum number of iterations it will be required to read the exact root so my suggestion is that if you have already calculated the approximate root just keep that initial value close to that value you will get the exact root and similarly since you have got these two roots the third root will be for this dutch roll as I already mentioned that the limitation of this Newton raphson rule is that if you give it a real number it will always remain in real domain and your series won't converge if it has a complex root. So better give your roots in terms of complex number then your series will be giving you the exact root of that equation. Number of iterations required to reach third root. Let me put x equals to minus 1 plus 3i which is very close to the root we calculated using approximate mode. So
so let me see how many iterations it required x dash after first iteration value will be minus 0 0.7309 plus 2.4555 x dash after second iteration it will give minus 0 0.5237 plus 2.314i third iteration minus 0 0.4857 plus 2.334i fourth iteration x dash equals to minus 0 0.4857 plus 2 0.3348 now the, since the roots are repeating we can see that this will be the root of the equation so you can see the closer i will be will be with the approximate root or initial value i put close to your approximate mode then number of iteration required will be less so finally this is the simplest method or you can say this is a least troublesome method you can use to derive the root of uh, nth order polynomial. There are other ways you can approximate this by using a, uh, since you know this is for lateral dynamics you can use two first order equations and one second order equation then you can equate the coefficient but it is very lengthy plus you will get when you will get the solution that will also become a fourth order equation. So, you will not reach anywhere. So, this is a pattern method to calculate a root of any nth order polynomial and one thing more uh, as I told you that this since this is for one root now as you know that complex roots are co complex root are in uh, are in pairs which will be mirror images about x axis. So, this will be somewhere about minus 4 point something here then another root will be just mirror image of this about x axis which you can get just replace this uh, initial value with minus 1 minus 3i you will get another solution with same number of iterations it will be minus 0 0.04857 minus 2 point 0 0.4 minus 334i so this is the method to calculate character trigger of n -th order and uh, more than numerical you will do it will be clear to you and that was my point of discussing this numerical theory thank you